Hello friends and a warm welcome back to Simple Essentials. If you're new to the channel, my name is Emmy and I create videos so that you can simplify your life in as many ways as possible. Typically I will talk about things like budgeting, meal planning, minimalism, organizing your space. If you need some inspiration around any of those things, I would love for you to become a subscriber to the channel. Just hit that little button below, it really helps me out and it helps me create more content like this for you guys. But you probably clicked on today's video because you're like, Emmy, I need some inspiration. You know, meal planning is hard. Lunch inspiration is hard. I don't know what to make for myself or my family. Help me out. I'm here to help you out. So what I wanted to do this week is a little bit different. Um, you probably know this if you've been part of the channel here for a little while, but I love meal planning. I'll link a um, card up here as well as a couple of videos down below where you can learn a bit more about how to do a meal plan or if you're just curious to learn how I do it. But meal planning is something that is gonna save you time, it's gonna save you money, it's gonna save you effort throughout the week. So what I did this week is I spent less than one hour, I think it was actually more like 45 minutes on Sunday afternoon prepping lunches for the whole week for two people for five days. And it was actually really interesting because um, my partner and I, we do kind of a bit of hybrid work at the moment. Um, a few days in the a week we're in the office, a few days a week we're working from home. And I wanted something that you don't necessarily need to heat up because depending on where you're working or where you have your lunches, you may not have the opportunity to have a microwave to heat something up. Same goes if you've got kids in school, this lunch prep is really handy for that as well. So I had three simple criteria for the meal prep you're gonna see. One, I wanted it to be budget friendly and use a lot of things that I already had. So you'll see that I had a bunch of things in my fridge that were left over from the previous week, as well as a couple of things in my pantry that I wanted to use up. So it's gonna be very budget friendly. It's gonna be really healthy. Um, I think healthy lunches are one of those things that, you know, if you prep it and if it's there and available to you, you are a lot less likely to go and buy a really cheesy, greasy, toasty or something like that from a shop. So if you have something nice and healthy in front of you, it's gonna be super easy to have that instead. Because let's face it, most of us are pretty lazy. And the third criteria, which I think is really important and has become more important for me over the years, is that it looks visually appealing. You know, sometimes bringing your own lunch can feel a bit sad and you look down in your little tub of leftovers and you go, this doesn't look very nice, but it's saving me money. Well, this little meal prep is gonna be budget friendly, but it's also gonna look nice. So let's dive in. I'm gonna show you what I made, like I said, less than an hour on Sunday afternoon to prep lunches for five days for two people. So let's dive straight in. So to be as efficient as possible, we're gonna start with a thing that will take the longest, which is the oven roasted vegetables. So I'm gonna season these very simply with some mixed herbs, some salt and some pepper, and I'm gonna be using olive oil. Um, I had a couple of different veggies in my veggie crisper that needed to be used up. These three carrots are actually pretty sad looking, so they really needed to be used up, otherwise they would go to waste. I also had one lonely potato, regular potato, and a sweet potato. So what I've done here is that I start with about two tablespoons or so of olive oil. You can obviously use any oil that you prefer. Um, two to three teaspoons of the mixed herbs and then some salt and pepper. And the key here is to stir this up really well because what you want is to coat every little bit of vegetable in oil. Instead of drizzling oil over the sheet at the end, you wanna make sure that they all get coated and yummy before you even put them in the oven. So you cut up your veggies and try to cut them in the same size pieces because then they will cook a lot more evenly. And then we just chuck all the veggies in the bowl um, and basically give them a really good stir. And what this is gonna do, rather than wasting oil by drizzling oil over things, this seasoning and the oil is now gonna coat each of the vegetable pieces. So you're gonna get a lot more flavor than if you use the same amount of seasoning and oil in a different way. I got this trick, learned this trick from someone a little while ago and I've been doing it a lot, especially with oven roasted vegetables. And I think it's really, really nice. Um, at this point as well, you can obviously add some chili powder or something like that, or garlic, whatever it is that you prefer to have on your vegetables. But if you have a look here, you'll see how each bit is actually really properly coated. And by the way, you could chuck in any type of vegetables you like. You could chuck in some broccoli, you could do zucchini, whatever you fancy the use of the most. 
And then we are gonna prepare this and put them in the oven. I use this liner, it's a silicone liner from Ever Eco. Um, I will see if I can find a similar thing on Amazon and link it for you guys. I've been using this for quite a few months and it is so good. You wash it with hot soapy water and that's pretty much it. So yeah, really, really good. You don't waste a lot of, um, you know, baking paper and things like that. Now with your veggies, you wanna spread them out and make sure that they're on a single layer. If they are stacked on top of each other and it's just like a pile of vegetables, they will cook really unevenly. So try to spread them out if you can and then pop them in your oven uh, at about 180 degrees Celsius for about 20 to 30 minutes or so. And then they come out looking like this and they are so, so tasty, both fresh, heated up and they work fine cold as well. This is probably the simplest step of all. You use whatever quinoa you have. I have about one cup here of quinoa and I forgot to film this step, but you wanna make sure that you rinse your quinoa properly and then you add it and follow the package instructions. I'm gonna do an extra step here, which is to add a bouillon cube. I happen to have chicken stock cubes uh, in my house. And I often do this to both rice, quinoa and things like that, just to add a little bit of flavor. So all I did was to add in my stock, stock cube, break it up and let it cook according to package instructions. Quinoa, if you didn't know, is gluten free. My partner is gluten free and it's something that we both quite like, both in salads and in other things. I will also link a really yummy quinoa salad that I've made before. I will link that in the description box below if you're keen to check that out. And now that I've got the quinoa going on the stove, I've got my veggies in the oven, we're gonna get started on the hard boiled eggs. Now, I personally love eggs, and one thing I never compromise on in my budget is that I always buy free range, but it's obviously totally up to you what you prefer. So I, I was hoping we had more eggs in the house, but we only had six, and I didn't really feel like going to the shops, so I bought, I was gonna work with what I had. So once the water is boiling and the eggs have been sitting out in room temperature during this time, I boil them for eight minutes. Now, I like a hard boiled egg that where the white is all cooked, but the uh, yolk is still a little bit runny um, and gooey in the middle. So I've found that if you bring the water to a boil and, um, and put the timer on eight minutes, then when they're done boiling, when your timer goes off, make sure that you rinse them off well and put them in a bowl with cold water. And ideally, if you have some ice cubes uh, as well, I didn't have all that many, but I normally add some ice in as well. And that stops the cooking process and gets me beautiful, beautiful hard boiled eggs every time. Moving along to our second protein, we're gonna work with tuna. And I am one of those people who don't mind tuna, but I like to add some other things to it. So I always have Greek yogurt in the house. I always have lemon juice and Dijon mustard is a staple in our house as well. So I'm just gonna use plain tuna, um, spring water tuna that I have, um, I've poured all the liquid off it. And then we're gonna put this in the container that we're gonna store it in, in the fridge. So I'm just saving on dishes and mixing everything up in the container it's gonna be stored in. So get all the tuna out. This is obviously a large can um, and just break it up into slightly smaller pieces so that it's easy to mix it in. Um, now you could obviously store the tuna in a little bit of liquid in the bottom if you wanted to, but I wanted to add a little bit more flavor and texture to mine. So I'm gonna use a little bit of lemon juice, probably, I don't know, a, t a tablespoon or two maybe. Um, and to get some nice um, flavor as well, I really love dill. I grew up in Scandinavia where dill is used frequently with all sorts of fish, and I actually like it with tuna as well. So I'm doing a little bit of dill and salt and pepper. And then to get that beautiful creaminess, which makes it a little bit more interesting and a little bit less dry, especially because you'll store this in the fridge for a few days, you wanna add, um, I'm gonna add a little bit of Greek yogurt. You could obviously use mayonnaise if you prefer, but Greek yogurt is a little bit healthier. So um, I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of Dijon mustard in as well. Um, I quite like mustard and lemon together. Um, and especially with fish, again, this goes really well. And then you're gonna just mix that nice and proper. And if you need to add a little bit more yogurt or something like that, that's obviously absolutely fine as well. But I ended up with it looking a little bit like this. Um, so it's got a little bit of creaminess to it. 
and we're going to store that in the fridge ready for the week. So this homemade salsa is one of my favorite recipes. Um, I got it originally from sweet peas and saffron to go with a taco meal prep bowl, but I quite often make it just in general. So I had a lot of very ripe tomatoes in my fridge that really needed to be used up. I had half an onion. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of coriander, as you can see, that didn't get used for another recipe. So all I'm gonna do is in my bowl, I'm gonna cut up the onion fairly small, uh, obviously do whatever works for you, whatever you prefer but I'm going to cut that up nice and small and put that straight into again saving on dishes put that straight into the container that you're going to keep this in the fridge for the week so once I've done with my onion I'm going to cut up my tomatoes and these were really really ripe which means that they were quite juicy so having a good set of knives if you don't already have that it's something well worth investing in so I cut up, uh, that ended up being about four tomatoes. I've got one left that I'll use in another recipe later in the week. Um, and then I'm cutting up some jalapenos. You could even put a little bit of the jalapeno juice in if you wanted to, but I'm just cutting up a couple of slices, fairly small, and adding them into the bowl as well. And this is a really simple recipe because it doesn't add a lot of you know other crazy things that you know it's added sugar and things like that added to the salsa that you buy in the store so we're just using a bit of lemon juice a little bit of salt and then trying to mix that up without pouring it over the edges which is not all that easy so this is what it looks like in the end um, at this point if you want to you could add something like coriander or cilantro but it's really beautiful just as it is This is a simple salad dressing that I come back to all the time. So do not buy salad dressings at the store with some really simple ingredients. You can make healthier dressing at home and know what is in the stuff that you're eating. So quite simply, you start with a bit of olive oil. I added a little bit of white vinegar, which is totally optional. If you don't like that, you know, you can leave it out. Um, and then about a teaspoon of Dijon mustard and half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of honey, just for that sweetness, which is really nice. Um, and then to break off the sweetness, we want to add a little bit of lemon juice, um, as much or as little as you want, and some salt and pepper, and that's it. And then all you do is give that a dang good shake, <laughs> and you keep it in the fridge. It lasts for um, up to a week in the fridge, I've found, and you have this beautiful creamy dressing that you can add and give it a shake every morning when you add it to your salad. Okay guys, so this is the meal prep for the week. It looks so colorful and so beautiful and I'm really keen to see how we go with this. So this is how much uh, I had uh, one cup of quinoa. It turned out to be about this much once it was cooked. My uh, oven roasted veggies over here, which was the potato, the sweet potato and the carrot. Got my proteins over here with the tuna mix that I made as well as some boiled eggs, which I'll obviously peel before I prep. This is one of my two heads of lettuce, so I've got just as much more, but I, um, I prepared this for the first couple of days and then I'll cut the rest up in a couple of days time. I have a fair bit of cilantro or coriander, um, as we call it over here. It's one of my favorites. My partner is less keen on it. So I didn't actually add this into my salsa. I will probably just sprinkle this on top when I prepare it. I've got my salsa. I ended up using, I think it was four of the tomatoes. Um, it's sitting in some beautiful juice here. You can kind of see so it's like lemon juice um, and um, just some salt. I don't have a lot of other seasonings on there. I mixed some of the jalapenos in as well. And then I have my, my dressing that I made up and showed you guys. So it's going to be interesting to see. I've never quite done a meal prep like this before. We're going to see what my partner and I end up mixing and matching. He likes tuna a bit more than I do and I we both really love a boiled egg. So we're going to kind of see how we go with this for this week but this should make plenty of lunches for at least four maybe even the whole five days and I'll report back to you how we go. Hello again, and it's now a few days later, but man, that meal prep was so good. 
um, I didn't film it. I should have, but my partner's face. So on the Monday, uh, we were both working from home and I put out the spread of all the beautiful things that I made for you guys and his face, like the smile, he was like, I feel like I'm at a salad bar. This looks so nice and so fresh. And, you know, he actually ended up putting most of the things on his plate. And I actually did as well. Like surprisingly, all the things really tasted really nice together. Um, a few things that I will say, though, is that towards the end of the week, if you did like I did a quinoa or you might do a couscous or something like that, you might find that it starts to get a little bit dry. So what you can do if you want to is add the tiniest bit of water to your couscous or your quinoa or something like that and heat it up a little bit in the microwave if you have access to one where you have your lunch. Um, I actually did that not with the quinoa, but I did it with the vegetables, the oven roasted veggies one of the days, had them kind of warm-ish and then I had all the other salad bits uh, on my plate just cold. So that's something that you can do to warm it up and make it a little bit more exciting towards the end of the week. The other thing you can do, which actually worked really well for me with the quinoa this week, was to add a little bit of dressing. So you can either use, in this case, you could use the juice or the yeah, like the beautiful like tomatoey lemon juice from the um, salsa, the homemade salsa that I showed you guys. So that can be really nice to just sort of sprinkle over to add a little bit of liquid and a little bit of flavor. The other thing you can do is obviously use the dressing that I showed you, the honey mustard lemon juice dressing that I showed you. It's super simple, quite healthy. It's obviously got a bit of honey for sweetness in it, but that can also be really nice to just drizzle ever so lightly over and kind of really kind of revive the things that might be getting a little bit dry towards the end of the week. And the final thing that goes without saying is that you need to have decent airtight containers to meal prep like this. So if you don't have great containers already, you know, look at maybe upgrading your containers over time and buy some better ones. My favorite ones, which you've seen quite a few times before, I think they're just from Kmart or Big W, which is like a kind of a budget store. Uh, so they have a plastic snap lid, but it's a glass bottom. So the really good thing about those is they're easy to reheat. They are, I guess, I guess a little bit Bit heavier in your bag but I really like them anyway the meal prep was really successful this week I will definitely be doing different versions of this in the future you could vary this any way you like you could change up your protein for tofu or chicken strips or ham or any other thing that you happen to have at home or that you like uh, we really like tuna we really like eggs and they're quite inexpensive so yeah there you go um, I'd love to hear in the comments below what you thought of this video and this meal prep, if you're going to try it, if you already meal prep like this, um, and any other tips and tricks that you have that you'd like to share with the community. I hope you have a fabulous week and I look forward to see you in the next video.